West Wing Week. Welcome to the West Wing Week, your guide to everything that's happening at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. This week, the President welcomed the Super Bowl champion Green Bay Packers to the White House before embarking on a three-day bus tour across the Midwestern states of Minnesota, Iowa, and Illinois. During his tour to the heartland, the President heard directly from Americans, including small business owners, local families, and private sector leaders, while promoting the need for faster economic growth, strengthening the middle class, and accelerating hiring in communities across the nation. That's August 12th to August 18th, or get on the bus. On Friday, August 12th, the President invited the Super Bowl champion Green Bay Packers to the White House to commend them on their victory and their commitment to community service. Well, on behalf of the Green Bay Packers organization and all of the players, we would like to present you with this. Of course, all of the fans on the team, and uh, it hurts us a little bit to give you this as well. <laughs> but uh, we give you shares of the Green Bay Packers. Man, that is outstanding. <laughs> the, uh, well, if I'm a part owner, uh, I think we figured this is the only way I, we could get you away from the Bears. No, what I'm thinking is uh, I think we should initiate a trade uh, uh, to send Rodgers down to the Bears. On Monday, August 15th, the president traveled to St. Paul, Minnesota, where he kicked off his three-day economic bus tour with a town hall meeting in Cannon Falls, Minnesota, where the president talked about a range of issues, including the commitment to invest in our nation's economic future. I personally believe that one of the most effective ways that we could help the economy is making sure that we're not seeing more teacher layoffs. And I'm going to be working with Congress and state governments all across the country uh, to prevent that from happening because you're exactly right. We can't eat our seed corn. You know, we, we, we can't shortchange investments in the future, and no investment is more important than education. Later, the president had lunch at a downtown eatery, the Old Market Deli where he was officially greeted by a local cowboy. The president was joined for lunch by post-9-11 veterans from Minnesota, where he heard directly about their experiences and discussed the steps his administration has taken, including the recently announced Veterans Employment Initiative, to ensure all of America's veterans have the support they need and deserve when they return to civilian life. After lunch, the president was on to Iowa, but first, the president made two unscheduled stops, First, at the coffee mill in Zimbroda, Minnesota, where he purchased pie for staff and talked with local Minnesotans outside. Nice to see you, sir. Corn and beans? Yep, corn and beans. Oh, soup, yeah. Huh? Okay. Rice has been pretty good. Yes, it has. How are Larry. you, sir? Larry. Nice and, to meet uh, you, sir. I farm as well. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're trying to make sure that uh, we just keep on growing these markets. Yep. You know, so you guys can sell your stuff. Well, you keep growing the economy. And That's what we're going to try to be doing. Active. Yeah, you're doing a great job. Sure. I'm, I'm glad, glad you should come to a small town. Yeah, absolutely. It's where America provides its food, its fuel, our troops. It, it's a privilege for me to be here. The president then stopped in Chatfield, Minnesota, where he chatted with kids from a summer program on the steps of a local school. The president concluded the first day of his tour by traveling to the neighboring state of Iowa at a farm near the town of Decorah. Here he held his second town hall of the day where he continued his conversation with rural Americans on the economy and creating jobs. There's been bipartisan support for something called an infrastructure bank where the federal government would put seed capital in it, but it would basically leverage the private sector that wants to invest in smart infrastructure projects all across the country because Look, there are a bunch of companies and a bunch of pension funds out there that are looking for ways to invest. They don't know where to put their money. What better way to, to invest than investing in America? On Tuesday, the president began the second day of his rural tour by having breakfast with five Iowa small business owners at Rausch's Cafe in Gutenberg, Iowa. The breakfast was an opportunity for the president to hear directly from rural small business owners about their experiences and highlight the steps his administration has taken to assist them. One of the steps he highlighted was his new jobs initiative, designed to help rural small businesses access capital, expand rural job search and training services, and increasing rural access to health care workers and technology. Later, the president officially announced his new initiative at the White House Rural Economic Forum at Northeast Iowa Community College in Piasta, Iowa, as well as engaging directly with a variety of rural leaders from across the nation 
to discuss the importance of growing small businesses and strengthening the middle class in rural America. If we're going to harness the potential to create jobs and opportunities that exist here in Iowa and all across America, we know what's possible if we're willing to fight for our future and to put aside the politics of the short term and try to get something done. Already this administration has helped nearly 10,000 rural businesses and 35,000 small and medium-sized farms and ranches to get the financing that they need. That's already happened. Later, the president attended two breakout sessions, first with Small Business Administrator Karen Mills to further discuss growing small business, and then with Secretary of Agriculture Tom Vilsack to promote agricultural innovation and renewable energy jobs in rural communities. Three, two. The president then sat down for interviews with CNN's Wolf Blitzer, as well as local television outlets from St. Louis and Kansas City, to discuss ways to grow the economy, strengthen the middle class, and accelerate hiring in communities large and small across the nation. After the forum, the president made three unscheduled stops, first in Maquoketa, Iowa, where he spoke with local students from Maquoketa High School, then was on to DeWitt, Iowa, where he stopped at a local institution, DeWitt Dairy Treats, taking a moment to speak with folks outside the shop before heading in to buy some ice cream. Later, the president stopped at Grasshoppers in LeClaire, Iowa, an antique shop. Hi, Mom. Good to see you, Mom. Come on, we'll see what we got in here. I gotta buy it the girl side. Uh, it's and it just goes on forever. You got all kinds oh, of stuff is. in. Oh, it is. You want, you stay up here. Yeah, so stay up here. Okay. It's always hard to shop for daughters. <laughs> let me tell you, that kind of stuff is safe. Yes, it is. I know. I know. Sasha will, will wear this. There you go. So this is going to be Camelia. This will be Sasha. Okay. I do. You're not allowed to give it. I'm a little nervous. She's going to give me the military discount because <laughs> yeah. I'm commander in chief. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was okay. Cool. Like, oh, all right. Thank, thank you very much. <laughs> On Wednesday, August 17th, or day three of the rural tour, the president's bus stopped in its third state in as many days, beginning with a stop in Morrison, Illinois, at the Whiteside County Fair, which was established in 1870. Here, the president attended a dairy cow judging and visited with locals attending the fair. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We have sheep here at the fair. Do you? Yes. Well, it's wonderful to see you. And nice seeing you. Glad to meet you. So never, you. So glad. You never you thought I'd meet the president in my life. I just life. saw you, Madonna. Yes. I just saw yes. you over here. <laughs> Later, the president attended another town hall meeting, a running theme of this week, in Atkinson, Illinois, where he was joined by Secretary of Agriculture Tom Vilsack and Secretary of Transportation Ray LaHood. The president continued his focus on engaging rural Americans about ways to strengthen the economy. Don't bet against America. Don't bet against our workers. Don't bet against our businesses. We have gone through tougher times than this before. And we've always come out on top. As long as we pull together, and as long as uh, you know, American know-how and ingenuity uh, is, is, is promoted, uh, there's no reason why we're not going to get through this tough time just like we had before. And America is going to emerge stronger, more unified, more successful than it was in the past. Later, the president made an unscheduled stop at Galesburg High School in Galesburg, Illinois, where he met with students, watched the football team practice, and briefly spoke with the team before posing for photos. Absolutely, I want to. I want to hear the cheer. It's win the day. Win the day. And I'm sure that's. Your I like motto. that. That's my motto every morning, man. <laughs> See? Absolutely. How about it? All right, let's hear it. One, two. Win, win the day. I like that. Come on. One time. Well, no, I'm. Oh, I'm on the game. One, two, three, six. There you go. Woo! The president then got back on the road and headed to Alpha, Illinois, to hold yes another town hall meeting. This time at Country Corner Farm. The president concluded his rural tour, expanding upon the administration's goals of promoting economic growth, strengthening the middle class, and discussing some tax reform measures that would help us address our need to close the current budget deficit. And by the way, when you hear folks saying, well, you know what, That'll, that's job killing. That's not job killing. When Bill Clinton uh, was president, we created 22 million jobs with a tax rate that was much higher across the board than it is now. We don't have to go all the way back up there on the estate tax or any other taxes for us to close our deficit and our debt, but we should ask uh, oil and gas companies that are making record profits that they don't benefit from a special tax loophole that the mom and pop store in Alpha doesn't get. And I don't think there's anything wrong for, uh, with asking me to pay a little more so our senior citizens don't have to pay an extra five, six thousand dollars a year for their Medicare. 
To find out more information on any of these topics or to see complete videos of these events, go to whitehouse.gov. And thanks again for checking out your West Wing week. Where do you guys get your smoothies from? We make them ourselves. You make them yourself? Yeah. Oh, are these like special super duper protein? Yeah, they're really good. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. come down to You should have come to Wicked last what, what, night. Are you, do you make the best smoothies? Yeah. She does. Yeah. She does. Yeah. She does. Yeah. Why? Everybody agrees. <laughs> oh, they must be pretty good. All right. Well, keep it up.